Dear listeners and viewers, the following podcast you're about to watch or listen to was recorded well before the July 13th assassination attempt on Trump's life. Please keep that in mind while you watch or listen. In the meantime, pray for our country. Hello and welcome to the Brothers Random Show. My name is Travis. I'm Michael. And we are two ordinary brothers discussing extraordinary ideas and some random shit. Michael, why are we here? Today we are talking about the uh, fairy tale, The Emperor's New Clothes, written by Hans Christian Andersen, and how it kind of fits into our media at the current moment, especially since the a few weeks ago we had the debacle of the presidential debate with Biden getting up uh, in front of 50 million people and kind of not being there. What I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare, what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. And the media just losing their minds over this. Because and they've been telling us for three years that he's capable of of running the country. And Yeah, uh, that he's all there. He's, he's quick and able and lucid. And all these words that they've been saying, and then all of a sudden he gets up there and stumbles uh, immensely. And now it's the Democratic Party has been kind of in uh, freak out mode. It's been uh, Death Con 1 yeah. has yeah. been thrown out a few times for them. Now, the thing is, is a lot of people on the right side of the aisle. Now this is something that's got everybody freaking out on the right and the left across the board. Yeah. Um, and cause I mean, one is 50 million people watched it, but our enemies watched it. Right. Yeah. And the enemies of the country they also yeah. watched it. So, and saw that the leader of the free world now, and they can't, they've come out and said, Oh, he had a cold. He was sick. Yeah, jet well, lag, yeah, you, you're, like all these different things, but it doesn't change the fact that the the president of the United States got up there and couldn't string a sentence together, and um, and no one's talking about Trump, which is so funny because the media just loves to talk about Trump, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. no one's talking about him right now. He is not in the limelight, and uh, which is okay uh, with me because because the guy needs to. He, he, what it did, what he did is he kind of slapped him and then now he needs to fade off and just stop talking uh, mm -hmm. because the, the one of the worst things about Trump is that he can get in his own way. Yeah. Um, so the emperor's new clothes, which is a story by Hans Christian Anderson that is almost 200 years old. He wrote it in the 1830s and he basically, uh, it was it was basically a, the thing about human nature. The thing about human nature is to go along with the narrative, to just go along, to get along, that kind of thing. Most people are going to do that. Most people do that. And we saw that. So basically, if you're unaware of this story, uh, the emperor has a couple charlatans that are his tailors who are making his suit. And they tell him that it's invisible. And and they say, if you can't see it, then you are the say two things then you are stupid and then you are also uh your position you don't deserve your position and unfit for your position unfit for your position right so his Which advisors creates a narrative that basically says that whoever can't see the clothes and if anybody says they can't see the clothes they are it's their own demise if they mention it yes so so they so they have several advisors go to see this new suit, suit of clothes and all of them think in their head, I need to tell people that I see that because then if I don't, people will say, well, you're unfit for your position. 
And that's mm -hmm. the fear that everybody has. And so they're all looking at it going, oh, yes, there it is. There it is. There it is. It is, is a beautiful. And they talk about the pattern and the stitching and all this kind of, and it's all shit, bullshit. They're all yeah. just, and because this narrative has started, the whole village is doing this. And then the one day the, the, the emperor is going down the street and a young boy uh, blurts out who who's unaware, you know, yeah. blurts out, why is he naked? You know, kind yeah. of thing. Why doesn't okay. he have any clothes? And then one person, everybody freezes, one person kind of snickers, and then everybody he starts laughing. Out. At like it just slowly breaks the 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 whatever the, the jam that's going the, on. Yeah, the damn the narrative. Of, uh, and then yeah. every and this is exactly what we saw with the media after after it was they couldn't keep it secret anymore. No. They couldn't. And some of them, I think, were very surprised because they I don't want to say that they're they're They had their head under a rock. It was basically that the narrative has been saying that he that Biden's completely fine. He's there. He's he's yeah. lucid and he's quick. And then everyone sees him on the stage, 50 million people watch, and it's like, okay, the jig is up. Yes. The the That's child, it. the metaphorical child has laughed That's, at what yeah. is going on. And now, and so this should, I mean, if we didn't have enough of a reason to not believe mainstream media anymore, this this should make everybody just drop out of it. Mm -hmm. Fox News, CNN, who cares? They are all shills of corporations mm -hmm. that are shills of the party in power. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we should just abandon all of them. Sometimes CNN gets it right. Sometimes Fox gets it right. But for the majority, they're sitting there telling us that he's okay and he's not. And we, we're the child, we're the crowd now. We're all laughing because we've all yeah. had this pulled away from our eyes. And every, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that the emperor's new clothes is basically asking you to not believe your eyes, not believe what you see mm -hmm. and see this happened with COVID and we, the COVID should have made us all go, mm, I'm out. I'm out of the, you know, I'm not, not trusting these guys anymore. I'm not trusting these guys anymore. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's it, and it's also like a peer pressure um, going along with the narrative, going along yeah. with the crowd. So this was this uh, in the 1950s. Uh, Solomon Ash did a series of studies where he had um, uh, people come in and look at a board with with lines on it that were the exact same length. And he would have planted people in the, um, in the group, right? Yeah. That n knew the lines were were the same length, but told everyone that they were that they were not. They're not the yes, same length. They're not the same. Length. And what they so found the was so the subject subjects, would be one person who didn't know. So everybody yeah. else says these are the, these are, these are not the same length. And then he's sitting there going, wait a second. They are. Oh, and I, then he changes his opinion. According oh, to I group. guess they are not the same length. Right. Yeah. So, and they, and he found that 75% of people would go along, even deny what they see in their, in front of their eyes and go along with what everybody else is saying. Yeah. Um, and that's huge. 75%. Yeah. 75% is, is a lot. It's, it's, a it's, lot. it's basically you're. You, yeah. So you, so is that, are we to believe that 25% are contrarians are people who go, what are you guys talking about? That line is clearly not the same length. Or, right. Sure. Or, or they are or the, the other way around or, or yeah. So I guess, I mean, generally speaking, yeah, probably about a quarter of people would either be contrarian enough or believe or stand up in their own convictions and yes. be able to believe their own eyes. Yeah. Um, uh, Chink Yeager, the, the founder of uh, TYT, uh, the young Turks um, shared this and I just love this. This is, this is, he, uh, he tweeted this. 
Well, and this and, is a very left organization that is mostly in yeah, very in, left and in they, line with the Democrats. They like that's that's what that's what they do. They talk about being yeah. Left. I mean, well, they do that. I think they give credit where credit is due. Yeah, and then they they call foul when when and I I mean that's why I kind of like to follow these guys is I kind of like to hear their side their side from yeah. a left a left leaning. So they they're kind of left of center, right? So they're mm-hmm. not they're not too far left, and they're mm-hmm. probably some of the ones that would claim that the the far far left has kind of taken over the the Democratic Party, and they have a problem with that. And so he's one that has been very critical. I uh, I don't know if he was one of the deniers. I can't say for sure if he was one of the deniers um, back a lot. You know, the last few years that's been saying, guys. Uh, Biden's not all there. We 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 need somebody else. I think he has been, but I haven't been following him that close. Bill Maher has been saying it for a while, and he's a lefty. Yeah, he's been saying it for. A, he's been saying. Yeah, it so there are there are several people out there that are that are definitely left that are just saying like, listen, guys, this is not our best best option to to run. Yeah. Um. So what in did, fact, what did... a lot of Democrats are saying like. Listen, guys, if we don't get somebody else to run, we're giving the the presidency to, to Trump. Trump. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, he tweeted this out. George Orwell was an unmitigated genius. Tell me this line from 1984 isn't absolutely perfect for the Democratic Party right now. Quote, the party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. It was their final and most essential command, end quote. <laughs> right out of 1984. Deny your, wait a minute, nothing to see here, guys. Nothing to see here. Jeez. Wow. Um, the, the, and the, what's so weird is they, right after the debate, all of them, you could see the damn breaking. All of them yeah. were just like, no, nope, he's turning, not all yeah, there. We got to replace there. him. Yeah. We got to get him out. We got to get him out. The thing is, is as they started to see that there may not be a way to get him out, yeah. you see them all backtracking now. They really are. Yes, like, they, it's so weird to see. They're all like, ah, nah, he was, oh, it's one bad. What? It, uh, what's one bad debate, guys? Obama had a bad debate. Like, yeah, he yeah, still yeah. came Every, back there's, from that. There's, like, the, there's the bootlickers, the sycophants, the people who are going to stick in, in line with the party. It's I mean, fair enough. You you're you're getting behind him because my understanding is, is because the primaries have already happened. Yeah, they can't remove him. He has to step down voluntarily. Okay, and I, 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 if I had to guess, because the Biden family is kind of a crime family, they're kind of like a they're kind of like the Sopranos, mm -hmm. um, just less cool, uh, uh, they, uh, they more basic- white. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically um, uh, holding out for like a big paycheck, like one of the donors, like one of the huge donors, like like Bloomberg or whoever whoever it is, goes, "Hey, here's a bunch of money for you to step down so we can get somebody else in there." That's going to be the only way that they can really get, but they don't really have anybody to replace him. They've just backed themselves into a corner of no, there's no way out. Um, Because, okay, so like him or hate him, Trump had a better economy. And Mm -hmm. people like you and me, people who are not in the upper echelons of the tax Oh, we felt those four years of a good economy. We felt, we felt those, those four, four years, years. Of great economy. Like I we, was, we I was putting money away for the yeah. like the first time in a long time. I was putting money away. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm making enough money, and I'm able yeah. to do that now. Mm-hmm. Oh no, no, I'm just pulling money out of my, yeah. uh, of my savings account. This is what real Americans are concerned by, and you and I, you and I are not political pundits. We're not going to sit here and rattle off like all the amendments. We're not. We're just ordinary dudes just talking about this because we we are the children, the child in the story. We're going the whole time. Every time I saw him on television, every time I saw him on television, he has the look. So 
not to throw our mother under the bus or anything, but our mother is 86. She's in her 80s. She's old. She's frail. And the conversations are kind of hard with her because she's not all there. It when you see him on television, that's what it looks like. And 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 every time I don't you have you walked with mom, you every time you walk with mom, you gotta hold her arm because she's at risk of falling down because she's which so we frail. saw. Which we saw. Which we saw. I mean, there is footage of uh, Jill Biden going up to get Joe after he's, the debate to get him not, off the stage. He's not running the country. We yeah. know it. We know yeah. it because we can see the way he is. Mm-hmm. Jill is running the country. And guess what? None of us voted for Jill. Yeah. Nobody. Well, I mean, this is something that I've I've been seeing a lot of the left talk about, and they're starting to kind of change their their the narrative. The narrative is switching a little bit towards, well, you're voting for the the good people around Biden. Oh my that, gosh! That that are that are that are good at what they do, right? So wow. this is this is kind of a. You know, pay attention to the experts during hey, again, COVID. Where it's during like, COVID, where it's they're like, just like, pay ah, attention to the, the experts. experts are saying, right? Like, wait a minute, these experts. We don't know who these experts. We don't know anything about the like. And it really kind of goes to I. I hate saying it, but like this shadow government that's behind Biden. Yeah. That's that's yeah. It's kind of kind of keeping everything moving along. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious this was years ago when Biden got up there and he's like, yeah, they told me to ask the questions in these order, in this order. It's like, or answer the questions in the, yeah. Or answer yeah. the, yeah. And then and you're like, who, who told telling, you that? So who, who told you that? Who's you're the leader the of the free world? Like, Why yeah, the hell are you listening to them? Yeah. So the, it, it, it turns into this thing. And this, this basically goes to show. So destiny got on. Um, with Michael Knowles, and they had a little bit of a debate. Got on Pierce Morgan. Oh, geez. And uh, and Destiny, it was it was telling because Destiny said he's like Jill Biden could walk out with an urn, and I'd vote for that before I'd vote for Trump. Whoa! So it's it just goes to show that they are willing part of the the Democratic Party, the the. The diehards, right? Yeah. There's the diehards that are now elections aren't aren't won on the diehards on either side. Elections yeah. are won on getting the middle the to kind of sway, are, yeah, one sway way one way or the other. Yeah, those are the, right. Those so are people who've elections. never voted Democrat, voting for Trump, or or vice versa, vice versa. are yeah. is kind of um because there was a lot of people who voted for Obama who had never voted voted Democrat in their life. Yeah. And voted for Obama because they kind of liked what they were hearing and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Right. Um, generally speaking, that's kind of how elections are won. Yeah. Um, but you have when you've got this, the Democratic Party basically just saying we would vote for an urn, we would vote for anybody um to yeah, keep that was Trump a, out to, of there to, or and to that's, just keep the party in power, right? To, yeah, to keep keep the goes, party in power. That goes back. That goes back to the the Orwell quote here, right? Yeah. It's like it's like you're not Nothing voting to see for here. yeah, you're not voting for a president, you're voting for a party. Mm. Yeah, uh, one thing I I feel like because I I mean I've voted Republican for for a while, but I there were people like RFK Jr. Had me yeah. thinking I might vote Democrat if he was if he was I running. Really, I really would have liked to seen him in that debate. Yeah, I de- yeah, I, I he straight I up. Guess there's something that kept him out, uh, some kind of arbitrary rule. But a lot of people are looking at that guy, going, "Uh, that guy, that guy's my guy." You know, yeah. and, and I every interview he's been in, and he's done a ton of interviews. I've just been super impressed by him. I don't really care mm-hmm. that he's a you know vaccine denier or whatever you want to call yeah. it i the, i could give two shits but i'm sitting there going he's making a lot of sense yeah the toughest part is um 
there, there's just sometimes there's little petty things that you start to realize about uh, uh, people who've been uh, voted into presidency. Yeah. Um, like since the advent of television, there hasn't been a bald president basically because people are biased towards good looks. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's that, that after that, after the advent of television, like never going to have a bald president again. Right yeah. now. Uh, and so for him, the biggest thing is just his voice, the way he talks. Oh, is gonna for, be the, for, for RFK, okay. RFK, the, the, the way he talks is going to be the, 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 probably the biggest thing that holds him back. And I don't know ex- exactly why he taught, he kind of talks that way. He's, uh, he's got that. He, uh, well, he claims it was because of a vaccine. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> right. So, yeah. He, he claims that that's what happened to him. And I, mm-hmm. It, I've heard his uh, family, like there's family members that it might be genetic actually. Cause they're, mm. they, I think like his sister has the same problem or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the, it is hard to listen to him talk, but what he's, but you need to listen to what he's saying. What he's saying. And you're substance. right. You're right. It That could be what puts people off mostly about him is that he's not, he doesn't have enough charisma the debates were just kind of, I mean, the, the, the truth is it was kind of funny. There were a lot of moments that I just kind of laughed out loud about, like, like when Trump was like, I don't know what he said. And I don't think he knows what he said. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. So it's the, like Jordan Peterson kind of tweeted out, at least I saw it on, on YouTube, him, him put out a little statement and he's like, I watched the whole debate. I will say Biden, not all there. It's, yeah, obvious. it's obvious. Not all there. But and then it's he been said, Trump, obvious. That's the hardest thing. It's been that's, obvious. That's the thing. That's the emperor's new clothes. <laughs> that's right totally. There. It's like, it's been, if you've Everybody. been paying attention, there's plenty of times that you've seen him yeah. act kind of in a similar way. Um, they've just kind of buried, they've, they've brushed it under the rug. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then Jordan Peterson, I loved it. He just said, and Trump, well, if anything, he's one funny bastard. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> I thought it was is. funny. He's like, so, a, he's kind of like a comedian. Like he has the, like, just, I don't know. I mean, yeah. people are put off by him and I get it. I get why they're put off by him. Uh, you, you want your, you want your president to be dignified, but you know, you got to look at his, you, you have to look at his track record. There were no wars, no new wars had started while he was president the economy was blasting, man. I was, I was making so much freaking money when that was going on. Yeah. Um, and those are things that really affect. He said, Biden said that the the most catastrophic thing that we will face in the coming years is climate change. I mean, is he an idiot? We're on the brink of a nuclear war. We have two superpowers that are joining up together who want to destroy this country is he he's got to be he's he's incapable he's incompetent he's incapable yeah. and everybody saw it during those debates the democratic party's got a big problem right now and they know they have a big problem because yeah. it's almost like uh when you turn on the lights all the rats <laughs> Scurry Sorry, swimmer. They, yeah. they scurry away. It's like they're all like scurrying away from Joe Biden at this point mm-hmm. because he because it, it, they, they they're like they're abandoning ship is what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And this is yeah. the first time that we've seen it happen because now it's blatantly obvious. Like you can't skirt that. You can't. Uh, look- but is it? It just seems like they are They're just going to double down what, on the narrative. It depending, I mean, it kind of just depends uh, because a lot of people came out, they were critical of him, and now they're starting to scale that back. I, w- the thing is, is I think they had thought they thought that there was a plan to be able to replace him, but once that plan falls through and they realize there's not really a great way to replace him then they're all going to yeah. tow the line again. They'll all, they'll all line up and tow the party line and yeah. say, yes, he's fine. He's, yeah. he's a great president. 
Um, he's don't got believe your lying eyes. Him. Don't believe your yeah, lying don't believe eyes. your eyes. That he's got great people around him that will make sure the country is taken care of, right? People that you don't vote that you didn't vote for that you have no idea who these people are. Well, um, I I gotta imagine. So I watched Bill Maher's uh, whole episode that he did after um after the debates and uh he's you can tell they're discouraged like the democrats are really discouraged by this they're like this is it's obvious that you can't you can't deny it anymore and bill maher's been saying it for he's like i've been saying it for nine months they should have gotten somebody else they needed to get somebody else he needs to step down but i don't think he can I think the the gravy train for the Biden family is Joe Biden. And it, once he steps down, the gravy train stops. And what I mean by that is like, which would make his, sense why Jill and Hunter. Yes. Um, are, you remember, are pushed, you, everybody, are, you remember Hunter co-prediction, yeah. like that guy that has that nothing a bunch to of pornographic do stuff on his, on ah, his, it turns out he's got his father's ear and he's telling his father not to drop out. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Cocaine addict. The, the 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 epitome strippers of, uh, yeah the hunter biden of... laptop <laughs> anybody oh anybody anybody remember this guy <laughs> and then and and it's like oh he's got nothing to do with his his father in the presidency oh shoot well he's got his ear now yeah. we're hearing he's got his ear and he's telling his father not to drop out yeah ah, shoot he does have something to do with the presidency yeah he does he really so, does guys like his okay. family's all got his ear saying don't drop out and well what? it's because it's the gravy train they're making a lot of money right now. gravy train i mean he what did he sell one of his paintings for or one of his shitty ass paintings he sold it. It was like a money money laundering scheme. Is he sold it for a couple million yeah. dollars? It's like holy shoot, hello, yeah, geez. right? <laughs> yeah. In this day and age where truth is like malleable, mm. we don't we don't know the truth. Nobody knows the truth. Everybody's kind of like, oh well, I heard this or I saw a study on this, and so everybody can any kind of hair brained idea that you get you can find like something to back it up and that's mm -hmm. the problem with too much information that's what we're at we're at this too much information to the point where we don't know what's true information what's not true information right so the the yeah. hunter biden laptop is a perfect example of this story breaks in a uh, right-wing newspaper and right before the elections and all the other uh, news organizations decide to not report on it. So we need to put it under wraps and say that it's m disinformation, right? It's Russian dif disinformation. And that's the problem is that there's too many dishonest people. Nobody's being honest about anything. And so it comes out later that that is, it's actually accurate laptop. He's facing a bunch of, you know, charges based on that laptop or based on, I think he's facing gun charges for something. But the point is, is that a bunch of people got together who knew that there was a problem with it and decided that we're not going to report on this. We're not going to tell the truth. We're not going to tell the truth. And that's the problem. There's nobody's telling the truth. And it go, goes back to the story. The only person telling the truth was the boy who was not involved in everybody's decision making, right? The, hmm. the naive boy, the the you know, and kids kids are good about this, right? You know, you'll be in the supermarket, you got a young kid, and there's somebody who's obese walking by, and sh our kid will go, "Oh my goodness, he's super fat," or something along those lines, and it's it's an innocent thing, but we tell them, Oh, shush, 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 you know, duh, 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 because we're worried about everybody's feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. but yep. a kid, but kid is like, kids don't have filters. Kids are usually honest. If they're just saying things, usually they get, they get taught to lie more or less. Yeah. When well, come... haven't been beaten down to the group think, right. So like beaten into group think. Kids oh, haven't, yeah, been they beaten haven't into been into group think, yeah. right? Yeah, um, yeah, group think was uh, a term coined by uh, who was it? Irvin Janice, 
or Irving Janus. Yeah. So yeah. I think he was a psychologist in the 1950s who decided who had coined the idea that everybody's groupthink is what everybody does to go along to get along. And this is yeah. where we're at in society now. And it's really easy to do this now because of social media, because social media kind of perpetuates a group think perpetuates mm -hmm. a, a, a standard uh, to the point where, or, you know, Orwell knew this Hans Christian Anderson knew this. So Orwell knew this, he, that, that book was written in the 1940s, the late 1940s, 1984 uh, was written in 19, in the 1940s. He knew that human nature was like this, that they would just go with the party, what the party says, because that's the thing that they do. Cause you're mm -hmm. part of this particular party. Hans Christian Anderson knew this 200 hundred years, years before. Yeah. yeah. hundred years before he was writing this. Yeah. He was writing this. He was, he was like human. This is human nature. This is what we do. And, and I would say that being connected throughout the world has just kind of made it a little bit worse. It's I think funny. It I think it's funny to sit down and walk to like sit back and watch it all happen. I'm not sure exactly why it's just, it's odd to me to watch how the the media how everything just like starts either everybody falls out of line and then it's like no nope, nope we can't get rid of him oh everybody, falls, everybody back falls back into in line. line i just it's weird to kind of watch the whole thing kind of unfold at this and point they have to convince him at this point they have to convince him and and the family, Jill and to, Hunter, to drop, to drop, to drop out, out. The, the, yeah, to to remove themselves. Yes, that's the um, only way. And there's, I mean, there's there's talk. I, it's whoever they replace him with. It is an uphill battle. There's there's word is on the streets. There's already two um, states that he would not that he's almost forced to stay on the ballot. Wisconsin and Nevada, I believe are mm -hmm. the states that uh, he'd either have to die or be re medically removed in order to replace him with somebody else. Well, and that still comes to um, his choice because he'd have to take a cognitive test. And if he disagrees to take a cognitive test, then they can't remove they him. They can't medically, medically remove, medically him. remove him. So um, I don't think they're, they're, they're toast. I mean, we got yeah. four, what was it? Four months before November. It's like, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's coming up unless that, unless Trump there's, does there's, something incredibly stupid, which he has been known to do. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything unless he does something incredibly stupid. I, he's pretty much won the presidency. Now, I could see something else happening here. I could see them doing one more debate because usually they do one another debate. Right. Yeah. If they do another debate and they juice Biden up and he's on top and he's on par or whatever like that. They were saying that that's what he was going to do this time around, but that didn't happen. But if that happens and Trump comes off just like a bully trying to just bully, like nobody wants to see the elderly get slapped around. And that's exactly yeah. what happened the other night. So a lot of the left's narrative is that tr Trump is a bully for kind of just pointing out the obvious. Like he's just kind of going... I don't know what he's talking about and neither does he, he doesn't know what he's talking about, you know? So if that comes across, I could see that kind of not helping. I mean, it is uphill battle for Trump because he, he lost it before and he lost it before he did the, the January 6th thing, like it or not, mm -hmm. that did rub a lot of um of people even republicans yeah. even staunch republicans wrong there's a lot going against both of them it's kind of funny these two old white guys up there just slapping um, each other at each other slapping each other talking about their and, golf game they even delved into yeah, golf game it's was, like i was like oh my gosh or, wow what, what is this yeah. this clown show personally i just like to see the economy get better i'd like to mm -hmm understand that when i buy something that i bought you know five years four years previous or five years previous that it's going to be the same price that it was back then because i'm getting sick of buying stuff that i knew was cheaper three yeah. years ago i saw a clip of a guy that had it would have been like five years ago oh, is this the amazon had, guy or is it was this? walmart 
he had a Walmart yeah. cart um, that cart list. he could go back. He could go back five. So he went back five years and looked at his uh, cart list that he put together. Mm-hmm. And you, there's a button you can p- push uh, reorder all. Yeah. And it was insane. It was like 130 bucks five Originally, years ago, five years ago. And he, and he pushed reorder all and it was like $420 to reorder all of it now. Um, so five years later, it, it's that's full, like, it's like tripled. It's tripled. Yeah, it's not doubled. It's, it's tri- tripled. tripling. It's, and you're just, and it, so, so I could, I could give two craps about what Trump says or who he screwed. I want a good economy again. Yeah. I want to be able to go on a trip and not have to use my credit card to pay for it. Check us out on social media, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just look for the sword in the skull. If you guys are listening to this and not watching it, please go over to YouTube and put a like, share, and subscribe. In the meantime, keep reading, keep watching, keep listening, learn more. We'll see you, brother. See ya. There is a deep, a wide, and a very aggressive panic in the Democratic Party. That's his performance after five days at Camp David. That's after rest. So I do think... Frankly, the campaign had to come out with some explanation. You're going to do something or just stand there and bleed?